Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to be discussing some of the recent discoveries that seem to redefine our understanding of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Discoveries usually using new simulations or new telescopes that recently helped us realize the Milky Way galaxy is maybe just a little bit different from what we originally thought. Or possibly even very different as you learn from some of the recent studies. And actually in that sense, let's maybe start with one of the more extreme discoveries coming from some of the most recent and most accurate observations using the iconic Gaia telescope. ESA's telescope has been actively mapping the night skies for the past few years. And because this telescope is extremely good at measuring the velocity of stars in the Milky Way galaxy, it actually allows us to see precisely how fast stars move around the galaxy dependent on where they're located and how far away from the center they are. Which then, in essence, allows us to establish the overall shape of what's known as the galaxy rotation curve. The curve that shows us how fast stars move much farther away from the center, which usually allows the scientists to determine the overall mass of the galaxy. And despite predictions decades ago, where scientists believed that stars farther away should be moving much slower, which is known as the Keplerian motion, which is of course what's observed in a typical star system, unlike planets, stars do not follow the same rules. They actually usually possess a very similar velocity independent of a distance. And by knowing this velocity, we can then work out the mass of the galaxy. And so something similar has been assumed for many, many years for the Milky Way galaxy based on previous observations of certain stars, which allowed the scientists to determine its mass as well. A lot of these recent calculations establish the mass to be approximately 1.2 to maybe 1.3 trillion solar masses, which is quite comparable to many other similar galaxies, including the Andromeda. But the recent observations and calculations from the European Space Agency and astronomers from the Paris Observatory used approximately 1.8 billion stars to recalculate the mass of the Milky Way. In the process of discovering that the actual galactic curve does not seem to be as straight as initially assumed, there is actually quite a lot of Keplerian deceleration, suggesting the galaxy does not have as much mass. And this is actually really weird because for a large spiral galaxy, normally the galactic curve is completely flat. This one is definitely not. With this recent study re-establishing the mass at, practically, 5 to maybe even 7 times less massive. Instead of 1.2 trillion, it only seems to be about 207 billion solar masses. With this unusual Keplerian decline basically suggesting a major decrease of dark matter on the outskirts, and thus a major drop in mass for some very unknown reasons. Now by itself this is actually a pretty huge discovery and needs to be definitely confirmed, but so far the results look pretty strong. And so whatever is happening here is essentially a new mystery and also suggests that our galaxy is way less massive than we ever thought possible and is almost 10 times less massive than the Andromeda. So definitely something weird going on here, but that's not the only strange discovery recently. Another recent analysis using what's known as the Illustrious Simulation, the most famous galactic simulation in existence, discovered that based on the parameters of our galaxy, and based on its location compared to other galaxies, specifically located inside a local sheet of galaxies on the outskirt of a galactic wall, for a galaxy like ours to exist, it would actually take a lot of chance. Basically, it makes our galaxy extremely special. First, they discovered that the spin of the galaxy seems to be relatively fast and also very well organized. Our galaxy was also a lot bigger in size, with most objects inside the galaxy generally possessing a relatively low velocity of dispersion. Basically, most objects inside the Milky Way do not move as fast as in some of the other galaxies. But because the galaxy was spinning relatively fast and was also inside the location with a lot of other galaxies, many of these parameters were expected to be very different. And so in the simulation, you only actually found one such galaxy within several hundred million light years produced by the simulation. Although one thing to correct here is, if we do consider the results from the previous study, they also assumed that the galaxy was much more massive. If it is less massive, then it actually does become a little bit more common. Either way, the results from the study suggest that, according to simulations, galaxies like the Milky Way should actually be just a little bit different. They should be maybe a little bit more hectic, potentially have a little bit less rotation speed, and obviously be less massive. So that the less massive part seems to work out for now. 
Other parts, not so much. Maybe it's a special galaxy after all. But a lot of these anomalous observations might also be explained by the overall shape of the galaxy. We are looking from the inside, so we actually do not see the entire shape. But because of Gaia, we're able to work out the shape with time by observing individual stars. And most of the studies now more or less confirm that the galaxy, first of all, is not flat, and second of all, even has these unusual flares that you see right here, that basically make stars extend kind of like little feathers from the end of the disk. And so quite a lot of recent studies establish that this is actually very likely because of the unusual shape of the galactic halo where the galaxy is located. All galaxies contain a large halo of stars, gas, and the invisible dark matter extending up to several million light years away from the center of the galaxy. And for the Milky Way, the original assumption was that maybe it was something like this. You can actually see the partner's large and small Magellanic cloud inside this halo as well. But turns out that, well, things here just look a little bit too perfect. The halo is too spherical, the galaxy is way too flat. But the reality of the halo shape seems to be a little bit more different. It actually seems to be almost egg-shaped and seems to be skewed by about 20 degrees. And so because the dark matter halo is skewed so much, it seems to have shifted the shape of the galaxy as well. And so based on various simulations, the researchers established that maybe about 7 billion years ago, there was some kind of a galactic collision that very likely shifted the position and the shape of the halo. And as soon as that happened, the actual galactic shape started to shift dramatically as well. It very likely tilted the galaxy by about 25 degrees almost right away, within just a few million years. But because there is so much mass in here, it took about 5 billion years for the tilt to decrease from 25 degrees to 20 degrees as it is today which then realigned the galaxy just a little bit, but not by much. And so in essence we have a galactic collision to blame for all of this. We don't really know what galaxy and when exactly this happened, but it's very likely the reason why the halo is so shifted, why all of this is still tilted even today, and why the Milky Way appears to be so warped and possesses so much chaotic activity, especially at the edges of the galaxy which is of course a pretty good explanation, and might even provide explanations for some of the previously mentioned mysteries, but at the moment it's obviously unclear if any of this is connected just yet. These are, at least for now, separate observations. And one of the last exciting discoveries coming from the Gaia telescope involves the chemical analysis of various structures in the Milky Way, at least relatively close to us. Basically here we're talking about the new concept known as chemical cartography, and well, this is what it sort of looks like. The sun is somewhere right there, and you get to see red and blue spots indicating either high or low metallicity. Or essentially red would be things like carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, or even more complex elements, whereas blue is mostly hydrogen and helium. Here's what the actual map looks like, as seen by the Gaia telescope. All this was then converted into two dimensions. And so what this reveals is that there are definitely very thick patches of young stars, or I guess high metallicity stars, in certain locations in the galaxy. And it just so happens that these locations seem to match with features we refer to as galactic arms. In other words, kind of confirming that, as researchers always suspected, a lot of young stars seem to be produced inside galactic arms, and a lot of ancient stars seem to be mostly located in between galactic arms. With a lot of spiral arms, overall being a lot more enriched in a lot of metallic or heavier elements. Here you expect more supernova, more star formation, and generally just a lot more activity. And though by itself this is not a groundbreaking discovery, it basically confirms a lot of assumptions many astronomers already had. What is exciting is just this new idea of chemical cartography. The ability to actually trace the entire galaxy, not just in the location of stars, but also in where exactly different elements are as well, which by itself opens new doorways for a lot of new science. And so yeah, quite a lot of exciting discoveries, a lot of super super exciting and unusual explanations, and at least a couple of new facts we currently cannot explain. Like for example, what exactly happened to the mass of the galaxy? Why exactly does it appear to be so much less massive than we ever thought? And if this is actually confirmed, currently there is no explanation for what's going on. But we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are additional explanations to what's happening to the Milky Way. Check out previous discoveries in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, 
Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.